I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. We are in the middle of Genesis chapter 19 that deals with the destruction of Sodom. And uh, we saw the wickedness of Sodom in verses 1 through 11 uh, as the angels there visit Lot and find Lot in the gate of the city, which speaks of a place of authority. And then we see how in uh, the Lot brings him to his home and that the men of the city gather around and Lot is delivered uh, from the lusting Sodomites in verses 5 through 11. And now in verses 12 through 23, we've been looking at the deliverance from Sodom. And uh, we saw in verses 12 through 14, Lot and his relatives. And Lot, as he goes to warn his relatives, oh, he seems to them as one that mocks. And how sad it is um, that he lived such a life that they did not take him seriously. And uh, the Bible tells us very clearly in 2 Peter 2, that Lot vexed his righteous soul from day to day, living in Sodom. And then after he warns his family, he's led out of Sodom, and this is where we find him in verses 18 through 23. Uh, we see now Lot is outside the city of Sodom, and Genesis 19, verses 18 through 23 says this, And Lot said unto them, O not so, my lord, behold now, thy servant hath found grace in thy sight. And thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me, and I die. Behold now, this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou be come thither. Therefore the name of the city was called Zoar. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. So as we come into these verses, first of all, let me say, as we think about Genesis 19 and the destruction of Sodom in general, that we're living in a day where many people... Um, are not just the sin of sodomy, but all sins. We're living in a day where sin is accepted, and uh, people have gotten to the place where they say, I don't care what God says, I am going to do what I am going to do. So as we come into these verses, what we see here is the mentality of mankind in general towards sin and the wickedness of it. And it's amazing that even as... Lot is rescued from Sodom. Instead of recognizing the um, folly of Sodom and the folly of living there and wanting to get as far away from it as possible, we see actually in verses 18 through 20 that Lot makes a very foolish and a very compromising request. Let's notice a couple of things in verses 18 and 19. First of all, I want you to notice the interesting phrase in verse 18, the Bible says that Lot said unto them, O oh, not so, my Lord. Putting Lord and not so together is a study of opposites. If we are calling somebody Lord, we are submitting to them. So how in the world can you submit to somebody, can you submit to God, and at the same time say not so? Not so is obviously not submitting. And uh, as we come into this passage, I was reminded of Peter also one time said, Not so, Lord. And how foolish that is, friends. We cannot say, Not so, Lord. But yet today, you know, it's not really all that different. Many people today call Jesus Lord, but do not obey him. As a matter of fact, Jesus says in the Gospels, Many call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say. And then we see in verse 19, it says, Behold now, thy servant hath found grace in thine sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me, and I die. The word take in that verse means overtake. And Locke's statement here uh, says that he was not fearful of some evil in the mountain taking him, but he was fearful of the evil of the judgment on Sodom overtaking him in route to the mountain. Uh, later, it's going to be very clear to us that, that Lot is not honest in this objection. 
So it's interesting that what he does here is he claims uh, disability to get to the mountain quickly enough, and he confesses distrust in God to keep him safe. God has delivered him from Sodom, but now he's questioning whether or not God will keep him safe. And you know, people still complain about their lack of ability. But many times when people say, I can't, what they really mean is, I won't. And uh, we need to be careful that when we say, I can't, which the Bible says we can do all things through Christ that strengthen us. But when we say, I can't, many times what a person is really saying is, I won't. And their distrust of God and the Word of God is just another attempt to blame God for their problems in the exact same way that Lot is doing that here. And then, um, Lot really has two reasons for wanting to escape to Zoar instead of going to the mountain. First of all, he says to God, it is near. That reveals Lot's lack of energy in doing God's will. Lot was not really fearful that judgment would overtake him on the way to the mountain. Rather, he simply did not want to put out much energy to do God's bidding. And you know, the exact same thing is true today. How sad it is of the lack of energy that some people have to do the will of God. Oh, they got all kinds of energy. They got all kinds of enthusiasm. But it's just not toward the things of God. And then he goes on to say, is it not a little one? As a matter of fact, he says that twice. It was little in comparison comparison to Sodom. This emphasis on little is the appeal that because the city is little, it will not be as evil as the bigger city of Sodom. Friends, we need to remember, as Solomon said, take up the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines. Um, little sins, uh, you know, the devil tries to tell us, well, little things really won't hurt us. That is a lie. And little sins lead to big sins, and they can hurt us greatly. And we need to be very careful of that. And then we see in verses 21 through 23 that Zoar is spoiled. In, verses, in verse 21, Lot gets the request answered. But friends, we need to remember that does not justify this request. Sometimes God lets us do what we want to do in order to punish us. The Bible reminds us of the nation of Israel in the book of Psalms that God granted them their request, but he sent leanness to their soul. So just because God answers a prayer doesn't necessarily mean that it's God's will. Sometimes he is giving us our own desires so that we can see how dumb it is to follow our desires and the need that is there. To follow God. And then in verse 22 of Genesis 19, we find here the final call to depart from Sodom. Lot was still being hesitant enough that the angels have to urge him to get moving quickly and to move fast. Uh, and friends, we need to, that reminds us that escape from divine judgment requires haste. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 6, 2, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. And lost sinner friend, I encourage you, those who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, do not presume upon the grace of God, but come to him while you have today. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. We see here in these verses that parting from Sodom was the only way that Lot would escape divine judgment. And, uh, you know, there are some places, there are some people, there are some philosophies that we must separate ourselves from if we are going to escape evil. Lot is taught here the principle of separation, and we need to understand the importance of separation in our lives as believers, that evil communications will corrupt good manners, and that we are deceived if we think otherwise. And we need to separate from these things and separate ourselves onto that which is honoring and pleasing to God. And let me also remind you, friend, that if you do not know Jesus as your Savior, that there's only one way that you can escape divine judgment, and that is through the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who took the judgment for your sin upon himself. Let me encourage you, turn to him today while you have the opportunity. Do not delay. Tomorrow we'll begin to look at the destruction of Sodom. Have a great day.